if I see all these things, say I'm happy, I'm optimistic, I'm, I could say I'm proud that during all these 11 years we kept Vaquita alive and now there's a bunch of people helping and doing important things. So I'm optimistic how the results are going to be at the end, I'm not so sure, but uh, this is Mexico's legacy in terms of marine mammals worldwide, and we have to do it correctly. Laws were created, reserves designated, but as of today, the decline of Vaquita porpoise continues. In 1992, a biosphere reserve was established, and in 2003, a Vaquita refuge. Unfortunately, these protected areas prove more to be an exercise of conservation on paper due to their lack of enforcement. I traveled to El Golfo de Santa Clara to meet Alejandro Robles, a marine conservationist with over 30 years experience in the upper gulf. When I arrived here in 84, prácticamente no había mayor interés de aplicar la ley. Eh, de hecho, puedo decir, porque fui testigo de ello, que los inspectores de pesca se dedicaban a mantener la pesca ilegal y a proteger a los ilegales. Era parte del negocio de los valores entendidos. El Alto Golfo tiene una de las historias más, más tristes de, los que, de, lo que un hombre, de lo que el hombre, la civilización, puede hacer con un espacio natural de manera directa o de manera indirecta. La pérdida del delta del río Colorado a lo largo del siglo pasado es, es dramática. ¿no? Yo creo que eh, fue uno de los primeros ríos en ser eh, represados en el mundo con muy poco conocimiento de los impactos y las consecuencias que eso puede tener y es, y es algo que tenemos que aprender. En 2005, Alejandro ayudó a establish Alto Golfo Sustentable, AGS a group to bring fishermen, industry groups, and NGOs together to organize and implement the key to conservation programs in the region. Una vez que estuve aquí en el Alto Golfo y empecé a salir a pescar con los pescadores, eh, en una de esas ocasiones, en una mañana fría de, de marzo, jalando un chinchorro, eh, aparecieron cuatro vaquitas, dos adultos, un, tal vez juvenil y un neonato, una vaquita recién nacida eh, y ese fue mi primer encuentro cercano con una, con una vaquita, ¿no? desafortunadamente estaban muertas y a partir de ahí y con la participación de los pescadores eh, logré empezar a registrar la mortalidad de vaquitas Due to free trade agreements between Mexico, the United States, and Canada, the conservation of this animal does not only fall in the responsibility of local and state governments in Mexico, but an international coalition called the Commission for Environmental Cooperation, CEC. To reverse the decline of vaquita, in 2007, a US $18 million initiative was implemented, a fisheries buyout, a plan to pull the nets out of the water and compensate fishermen for it. It sounds like a, a simple solution, and in many ways it is. It's not as complex a problem as many uh, areas like where the Baiji lived in China and the Yangtze River, much more complicated issue. But nevertheless, there's only a few animals that are getting killed a year, and there's a few thousand fishermen making a living in the same area using gill nets. And so finding a way to make subsistence fishermen who are just putting food on the family's table, compatible with living with this rare species, is going to be something that takes a lot of dedication from a lot of people to make it work. There are actually three components of the plan. A buyout, a rent out, and a switch out. The buyout is where a fisherman sells his license for an amount of money. The rent out is where a fisherman receives a sum to keep his gear and nets out of the Vaquita refuge for a year, even though fishing in the refuge is illegal. The switch out is where a fisherman keeps his boat and license, but uses alternative fishing gear other than gill nets. All of these programs are entirely voluntary. And the idea is of a true buyout is to buy the fisherman about 10 years of making a living. 
So the average fisherman in the northern Gulf makes about $5,000 a year. And the economists say, well, if we give them $50,000, basically that will give them time to retrain. But there's all sorts of issues, as you might well imagine, social issues um, in terms of making sure that that money actually goes to retraining and, and establishing some sort of sustainable livelihood for fishermen who haven't known anything but fishing their whole lives. It's very simple to say, we need to get gillnets out of the water. And true, that is the quickest way to save the vaquita. But behind that, there's a different, there's so many different issues that you have to look at on what is the impact of getting gillnets out of the water going to be for fishermen and what is the impact going to be on the communities. So let's have a, an alternative gear and with that then maybe the possibility of going into green markets because it's going to be a more sustainable product. As part of the buyout plan, the Mexican government set up groups to promote the development of small businesses as alternatives to fishing. Most people are turning to tourism with the hope that this trade will grow into the future. As I investigated further, I learned fishermen can hold multiple permits, not only for shrimp, but finfish and shark, so they can sell their least valuable license while retaining the more valuable shrimp permit. Whether a fisherman received funds for selling, switching, or renting out their license, ultimately, they can participate in the program and keep on fishing. Entonces, prácticamente, no hay arte de pesca eh, que no se utilice en esta región en donde la vaquita, o que se utilice en esta región en donde la vaquita no, no es susceptible de, de morir. ¿no? Entonces, es un desafío muy grande el ver cómo podemos extraer esta riqueza biológica para beneficio de las comunidades locales y a la vez poder preservar a la vaquita. So I decided to learn more about the buyout plan and how it was affecting the community of Santa Clara from the fishermen's perspective.